Tankers fantasy football. Boogie and Dukes Boogie on the left. Telling you to watch Duke. Jack Ryan on Amazon <laughs> Prime. That's Ryan. good. Mm. That was really good. We got some matches for you. Sit starts. Yeah, break it into some stardom sit-ems. But before we do that, you know, Snow, we just got to kick that intro. We are back, and we are going to get right into some starts at the running back position. Carlos Hyde went out there, shit the bed for you <laughs> against the Chargers. Thought it was a good matchup versus the Chargers. Only got you like the three PPR points, but I think we can't lose faith here because he's going against the Bucks, and the Bucks are giving up the second most touchdowns and fantasy points to opposing running backs. So I think all in on the RB two for the Carlos Hyde in Week Seven. And a guy, I can't even believe I'm saying this. Ridiculous. We're talking from the depths of the sea, reincarnated. You know, he was Frank the first 35 year old to run for 100 yards in a game. 100 yards on the Bears' front seven. First 35 year old chalked it up down in South Beach. Bears fucking sleeping at the wheel after the bye week out there looking lackadaisical. Bears and Gore has another, has a juicy matchup. If they're going to keep riding him like Adam Gase appears to be keep riding him, and he was running fucking tough. I'm not, I'm not hating on him. He looked fucking good out there. Lions are giving him the second most yards to running backs thus far, so I think this is an, I think this is an all-in RB3 flex play for the Frank Gore in Week 7. Hey, and some, uh, in the Broncos' backfield, I like both these guys. We're Royce talking, Freeman's been on the ropes lately, but this is a sneaky play, I think, for him this week, baby. I feel like if... With the bye weeks here, you might be able to, you might have to put him out there in like a flex. But I feel week like nine, I have to, no matter what. My fucking team's depleted out there week nine. Lindsay, I think, is an every week RB2 for you. We're talking about going up against the Cardinals, who have given up the most yards and points to running backs. Not to mention Latavius Murray. The first rushing touchdown the Vikings all season. Yeah, Latavius Murray's bum ass went over 100 yards and got in the end zone. Versus the Cardinals, so I think all in on the Lindsey and Royce Freeman this week. I think Royce Freeman will find his ass back in the end zone. I think Lindsey will continue to produce back end RB2, like, you know, 13, 14, 15 points out there. All right, some sits at the running back position. AP, who surprisingly banged up all over his body, but he still went out there and almost got the 100 yards. Went out there and got the 97 yards for you against a stout defense. Like the Carolina Panthers, but I don't know. I mean, this week, I think, if, if, especially if Chris Thompson comes back, if Chris Thompson is still out, I think you just got to start him just because of sheer volume alone. But the Cowboys are kind of tough against the run, giving up the ninth fewest yards and the fifth fewest touchdowns out there thus far to running backs. All right, a guy in Sony Michelle, even though, I mean, at this I think point, you got to start him no matter what. He doesn't have a good matchup, so I don't know if it's truly a sit, but it might be more like a daily fantasy play to maybe avoid him. He's going against Chicago, who have given up, what are we talking, fewest points and fewest yards from running backs, and that is including the Frank Gore losing his mind. But I just feel like, I don't know if his ceiling's quite there. Yeah, like in this matchup. the ceiling might not be there in this matchup, but I don't think there's any way you can sit him. I mean, the weapons of New England appear to be allowing them to the offensive line to just open holes for Sony Michelle. He is just out there grinding. He hasn't been really catching passes, only has like the one uh, pass catch in like the last two or three games. But I, I don't know. I think you just got to keep running him out there as an RB2, even against the Bears, especially what Frank Gore was able to do last week. I just, I don't know. I think he can find his ass in the end zone, and if he can find his ass in the end zone, I think that's all it takes to be an RB two this year. I mean, I feel like you, ha I feel like you really have to start him in your lineups, yeah. no matter what. Yeah, you can't what. just. Yeah, I think this is just a. Get, so it's a kind of just you know temporary expectations here. A guy that we talked about in the sell highs, 
We're talking Alex Collins going against the Saints. I think they're going to be, be playing from behind a lot. That might be more Bucky Allen. Yeah, playing from behind. And the Saints D has been relatively stout versus the run, only giving up the fourth fewest scrimmage yards to running backs thus far. So this might be a game script. And just, a, you know, maybe the Saints go out there, they stuff him on his first couple of attempts. Saints get up a couple of scores, and since he hasn't been looking good, maybe just game script time. Maybe Flacco goes full, huck it, chuck it football all day to Crabtree and Brown because the Saints have been giving it up via the pass have been stout against the run. So the Ravens might just go in there and just all in, like an abandon. You know, they, go, they know they're going to have to clang and bang against New Orleans anyway, even though it's in Baltimore, which is probably the only thing really helping them. Yeah. I mean, Superdome is probably over before it starts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Track meet out there. All right. We got some Lamar Miller sets. He's playing against the Jags. Jags, he hasn't looked that good, but I think Lamar Miller I mean, has I looked feel worse. Like I really don't think the Jags are that good. No. I'm thinking about ben I've drafted them in a couple leagues, and I'm leaning toward the bench. I feel like this team is Jags D. just deflated. I feel like there's just so many bodies out. We're talking their best two left tackles, starter and their backup. They're out. Fournette's out. Marquise Lee's already out. Corey Grant's out. Safarian Jenkins is out. Well, none of those guys play defense. <laughs> well, true. This defense is just not. It just hasn't been the same. They just don't have the killer instinct this year. Yeah, Saxonville is not. They only have like what one or two interceptions on the season so far. They've, Maybe they've even got two. One. They've got two against Mahomes. But that was their first two, wasn't it? I don't. Yeah. I think they went that into that game week game. five with zero. They had one called back earlier in the season on a holding play. So yeah, they've only had the two so far. And they're still getting up the six fewest yards and the fifth fewest touchdowns to running back. So I think you know if you have any other options, I think Lamar Miller is probably worth a sit though, even against the team. They're, it's well, in I Jacksonville even, too. It's in Jacksonville, so that's always good. Well, I don't even know if it's Lamar Miller's backfield anymore. Yeah, when the, they don't expect Devontae Foreman back this week though. No, but I feel like Alfred Blue has looked more spry yeah. than Miller at this point. Which is just weird because Alfred Blue has looked so just another guy his whole fucking career. All right, how about some wide receivers? Tyler Boyd is becoming your boy out there at every week. Three play. of the last four weeks, over 20 PPR points. Baby. You got to play him every week. Going against the Chiefs. Waiver wire ad of the year so far, I do believe. I mean, who's contesting it? Philip Lindsay, but yeah. I ain't got to give the noise to Boyd to give the nod to Boyd. Give the noise. The noise. The the bring back the old Domino noise. Was it the Domino's? The pizza? I can't remember who the noise was working for anymore. <laughs> He was out there loving pizza, though, that fucking weird red bastard. But, I mean, this guy, we're talking about going against the Chiefs, looking like another shootout. This already is blowing it up. Now <laughs> it's scripted to have him just you see even more volume this game here. Oh, and, it, you know, they're going to have to cling and bang with the Chiefs. I mean, this, could be, this is probably going to be one of the mid-50s over-under games in Vegas, so I think this is going to be a heavy offensive game plan. All right, we got another. We got some other starts. We got John Brown, Michael Crabtree. Michael Crabtree kind of had his coming out party last week. John Brown kind of took a back seat out there. But the Saints are giving the most yards and the fifth most touchdowns. Two wide receivers, and you know they're gonna have the Ravens. Like we said, are gonna have to clang and bang to keep up with Drew Brees and company. All right, some wide receivers thinking about benching. I don't think you can bench Emmanuel Sanders. But I well, really think you can bench Demarius Thomas. Yeah. Like I say, so high on Demarius Thomas. He's gone out there and got you two garbage time touchdowns in these last two weeks. Like, I'm had even the four talking targets like, in week six. I'm even talking like two flex leagues. Like, he might still be on your bench at this point. If he doesn't have the two garbage time touchdowns the last two weeks, this guy is unstartable. Yeah, the Cardinals have been tough to receivers. They've given up the. Fewest touchdowns and points to wide receivers. I mean, they were, I mean, you know, Thielen still ate out there, but Diggs was shut down for like a seven PPR game. I mean, Thielen just unstoppable. Fucking guy is a six straight hundred yard game to start yeah. the season. Most in like the Super Bowl era, right? He's a dog out there. Oh, he's incredible, man. And fucking insane. All right, we got some other sits. We got some Will Four and Kiki QT. I think they can be sat. In Jacksonville, the Jacksonville still give them the fewest yards and the second fewest touchdowns to opposing wide receivers thus far. 
All right, and a guy here for a sit, I feel like you might be chasing points if you try and put a guy like Albert Wilson in there, who has shown the potential that he can blow it up, but I just don't feel like you can feel good about him putting him in your starting lineup until we see a little bit more consistency and being a true wide receiver instead of this gadget play who just goes off for 70 yards. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't know. You know, you see the type of guy that blows it up one week and then lays a shit burger all over your chest the next week with like a two point PPR fashion, kind of like Amari Cooper or some bullshit. <laughs> I fucking hate you, Amari Cooper. <laughs> all right, I did bench him. Eleven fifty six. I was staring at his name and I was like, you know what? Fuck you, Amari Cooper. <laughs> and I took him out of there, baby. He got knocked the fuck out like early in the second quarter. I'm not saying I was glad motherfuckers ever. Get Knocked the fuck out there, but it was, you know, it was good. It was good for my fantasy. You team. felt good about it. Yeah, you know, it made me feel like, you know, fuck Mike Cooper paid off. All right, Burton all in on the Trey Burton this week. Pat's defense gives the second most touchdowns, two tight ends, and touchdown has kind of been Trey Burton calling card thus far because he hasn't really Those been eating in the receptions and targets the shovel passes. That's the only thing he's got in his arsenal, I feel Yeah, like. he's a touchdown or bust tight end, I think. All right, Njoku finally got it going for you good. We're talking about Tampa Bay here. Absolutely terrible. Finding their defensive, defensive coordinators. Giving up the most yards and points by tight ends. We're talking over 100 Yards, a hundred and four yards to tight ends a game. Just gross, eating That's out gross. there, double fist and eating out there. Hundred and four yards to fucking tight end. <laughs> Holy fuck! Ah! It looks like I'm throttling Kyle. All right, All right. we got some Uzama. We got Chiefs are giving the second most yards to tight ends. If Tyler Croft sits, Tyler Eifert leg is still flopping around out there somewhere. So I think this is all in on the Uzuma. I went other got you like seven targets. I think he got, got you like the 11 PPR points without a touchdown. If you can get 11 PPR points without a touchdown in this tight end landscape, that is That's, sexy deluxe. Like Greg Olsen getting 8.8, playing 98% of snaps. Greg Olsen. He's got to find his way in lineups. All right, we got some one sit at tight end. got Ben Watson. Ravens have yet... To give up a touchdown to the tight end position on the season. So if you got any other options, go to the waiver wire, find somebody else besides Pitt Watson, baby. <laughs> All right, there it is. Got any questions? Comment below. Give us the thumbs up. Give us a subscribe. Share it with your league mates. Spread the love out there. Yeah, spread the love. Get your league more competitive by getting everybody up on this tankers jam baby now on the itunes listen to us on your commutes to and from work out there all right all right thank you again for watching don't forget to smash the piss out of that like button we'll see you week eight cheeseburger <laughs>